Thank you. I might actually take these clothes. Ooh. Take them off. Oh, thank you. Um, so we are obviously in Advent. Um, so uh, you can imagine this morning I am going to be talking about the nativity. But as I was explaining this morning um, in the prayer meeting, um, I kind of like I, I've mentioned this before. The last time I, um, I shared with you is that. I don't like to be over familiar with something. Um, I always feel that we miss something when we know a story or a passage over and over. And maybe you've heard several sermons on it. And to me, the nativity has got to be one of the most well-known parts of the Bible throughout the world. Um, like how many people go to different nativity scenes with their kids in school every year, you know, and all the rest. So it's, it's well-known and it's maybe one of those wee things that you know, there's so much that we could miss in. Um, so this year I decided that I would do it a wee bit differently and I wanted to go and look at the individuals as part um, of their process and their journey um, individually. Um, and I was saying to Aaron during the week, I was actually really struggling because I wanted to go through everybody. I have actually, I have found such passion and excitement for the nativity again this year on just looking at how each individual has started off in a place where they feel they are with God, what God does in them, and to see how they journey and how they process that and how God has done something um, through them. And how in each of the characters, I've been able to see a little bit of myself, whether it was in the past or now, or even hope of who I would like to be in the future in my faith. Um, so I wanted to give you just a wee snippet of that this morning. So to me, if you're going to start off in nativity, you have to start off with Mary. So that's who I'm going to share with you this morning. Um, so I'm just going to be reading um, from Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 26. So I will be referring back to this quite a bit. So if you do have a Bible, then please do open up and follow along with me. So starting in verse 26. It says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth into a town of Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. He will, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For the word of God, for the word of God will never fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me fulfilled. Then the angel left her. So there is a wee bit we're going to read on later on, but that's why I'm just going to stop there at verse 38. So I'm just going to, you're going to have to forgive me. I'm actually going to do this off my phone, the Bible on my phone this morning, on the basis that I have it all highlighted galore. And I am one who definitely loves to write notes and stuff in my Bible, but I thought this was going to be a wee bit ridiculous because there is a lot of different sections I want to look at one at a time. So I want to start off, first of all, um, just starting at verse 28. So as we read it, it says, The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Now, to me, that sounds like quite a good compliment, isn't it? But what really got to me was the very next bit, which is Mary's response. And it says, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Now, 
Well, if we look back into the, that sort of place of where Mary was, Mary is a teenager. She you knows she's pledged to be married, which means in that culture, she's around sort of 14 to 16. But she's also from a culture where women aren't seem to be of much value. You know, they don't have any security unless they have a man in their life. Basically, whether it's a husband or a father or a brother or whatever to look after them, that's where their security is. So for me, when Mary say, um, hears this amazing compliment, an angel has just showed up and said that she is highly favored and God is with her. Um, you know, she's troubled by it. And she's wondering what kind of greeting it is. And to me, when you're given a compliment and you're worried by it, you know, you're wondering what kind of greeting this is, it makes me feel that she's somebody that knows that when someone gives you a compliment, they're wanting something from you. They're either wanting something or they want you to do something. It's going to cost you something. And even at her young age, in the place where she is, you know, she's had a past before this. She also has eyes to see the culture around her. And she knows that, that this is possibly going to cost her something. Um, but then the angel returns to her here in verse, 20, or verse 30. It says, but the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. So he's just reaffirming, you know, that you do have favor with God. And I kind of just want to pause at this wee bit for a minute because I wanted to, to look at is there something in that that we see in ourselves? Maybe something in our past, or maybe something there where we are right now. Um, you know, if, if an angel showed up to you right now and said, you know, you're highly favored by God, what is your response? Do, is your response this morning, yeah, I am. I am. God has called me. God's told me he loves me, and I am favored by him. Or is it, your response like, no, it's not me. You're, you've got the wrong person. My response naturally when I read that is, no, that, that's Mary. Mary's this amazing person of obedience that we see in the Bible. And yet here, she is feeling the exact same way we would feel or am ourselves. She's troubled by it. She's wondering what this is. And I just think it's, it's, it's something that we need to sort of look at and to focus at. Because um, this morning, God's response to us in that is exactly the same as it is to Mary's. He wants this morning to reaffirm that he loves you. He, he finds delight in you and that you are favored. No matter what place you're in, what circumstances that you are in, maybe you, know, you feel you've let him down or you've done something wrong or maybe, maybe you're thinking, yeah, back then, I was, you know, a stronger in faith. I was doing more for God. Yeah, I could see that he loved me then and he fi I find favor in him then, but not now. Not now, I'm not the same person. I'm not doing the same things. And yet God's saying this morning to, to you that he loves you. He loved you back then. He loves you now and he is going to continue to love you despite what you think of yourself. So, this is my first week, but I want you to sort of keep an open mind and sort of feel challenged this morning. That are you willing to listen to God this morning when he tells you that you're loved and you're favored? And are you gonna let that place somewhere in your heart? You know, we've just sung that song, He Loves Us. And the words of that song are beautiful because they are the truth and this is what it is. So I just wanna keep that in mind and then we'll move on to the next bit. So, um, so the angel turns around and tells her, um, do not be afraid. And then as we just go on um, from 31, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you're to call him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever and his kingdom will never end. Okay, so Mary's response then come thir verse 34 is, how will this be? Mary asked the angel, I am a virgin. So she's just heard this mind blown. Basically, you know, she's just been told that she's a virgin, she's gonna give birth and it's gonna be God's son. And anybody in their right mind would be like, what? 
how is that even possible? That is far beyond our understanding and our reasoning. And that's Mary's response too. She says, like, how is this going to be? And the angel answers, the Holy Spirit will come on you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. And he will be born called the Son of God. But I love this next bit. So he's basically saying, you know, the impossible, the uh, something that we can't comprehend, something that we can't understand, God's gonna do it in his power. But then he says this in verse 36, even Elizabeth, your relative, is gonna have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. So God has given her mind blown. This is what I'm gonna do. This is how I'm gonna do it but also I've already done this. You know, your own relative, somebody that you know firsthand is your blood and your flesh, someone who is beyond the age, somebody who everybody thinks is barren and can't have a baby, that's impossible. I've already done it. I have made it possible. And I love the next line in um, verse 37 where it just says, for the word of God will never fail. He's just said, mind blown, you don't understand this, you think this is impossible. I've already made it possible for somebody else who you know, why? Because my word never fails. And that's the same place where we are this morning. You know, we all have our own circumstances. We all have this place in our relationship and in our, our journeys where maybe right now today, you are in a place where, you know, you feel it's impossible. Maybe you're trying to have hope for the future, but you've just got a recent um, diagnosis that tells you it's different. Maybe you're fearful because your, your job's uncertainty, or maybe you're struggling in your finances or even in a relationship that everything feels like it's going the wrong way, it's going to the end, and it feels like it's impossible, nothing can be done, but God's saying, I can do the possible, and you know why? Because if I said it, it's yes and it's amen, because my word never fails. And I think this morning that maybe we just need to be reminded of that, as well as why? Because we are loved and we are favored by God because he has chosen us, every single person in this room and anybody that listens afterwards, that, that he's speaking to you this morning on those things. Okay, so going on then, from 38, Mary's response. Her response is, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Now in another translation, it just says that I am the Lord's servant. What you have said, let it be. And I love how Mary responds. Her words in this is, Lord, let it be. You know, we go back to that very verse at 29 where she's troubled. She's wondering where, what's it gonna cost her? What is her part in this? What's she gonna have to do? And then it's, Lord, let it be. Now, as I already said, Mary is seen as this person of great obedience throughout the Bible. She is known as this woman of obedience. To me, yes, she's totally obedient, but to me, she is such a woman of faith because she has gone from, I'm worried, I don't know where this is coming from, what's this gonna cost me, what am I gonna have to do? What, you know, what's my part in to being told the unbelievable, the un, uncomprehendable, to being told the impossible can be made possible because I've said so. And her response is, the Lord let it be. And I'm just thinking this morning, are we in a place this morning where God's saying he wants you to do something or he has given you something and you're sitting there thinking, yeah, Lord, but what's it gonna cost me though? What am I gonna have to do? What, what is my part in this? And you know, maybe he's asking you to move into a ministry or move into a different part of um, something that's gonna cost you, maybe changing jobs that maybe you're quite comfortable in, you're happy in, or whatever the circumstances is, and he's asking you to do, is your response this morning saying, let it be, Lord, I will follow. You are the God who makes the impossible possible. Or are you still that person 
what's it gonna cost me? And we know the story of Mary. We know the future down the line. At this point, she doesn't. But even then, you know, we see that she has to watch her son suffer. And as a parent, like that's just, um, like you just don't, you don't think you could actually do that, and yet she does. And at this point, she doesn't know that. But still, I reckon at that very moment, she wouldn't go back and change that. She wouldn't go back and change her response of, Lord, let it be. Because even in all that hardship and everything that comes beforehand, like she is ridiculed. She is set aside as this you know, young, unmarried mother who is pregnant. She's called liar and probably all sorts of things. Even today in this world, she would find it a hard place to be in. But in that culture, it was so much more. And yet her response, knowing that that's what that was gonna be, is Lord, let it be, because she had that faith. And then just moving on then, I'm just gonna read quickly through this next bit because I want to focus on just the bottom part. So after the angel has left her, she goes and visits um, her relative Elizabeth. So at that time, starting in verse uh, 39, sorry. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to the town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear by but why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached the ears of my baby in the womb, he leaped for joy. And this is the bit I wanna focus on just in verse 45. Blessed is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Now this is, like I had already said, you know, what Mary did was not an easy task, but she was so blessed in that. And maybe we're in a circumstances um, that God's asking us to step out or to, to have faith in. And, you know, it's not gonna change the place that we're in, but it's gonna change our hearts. It's gonna change our response and our outlook and the circumstances of following God, because you are going to be blessed if you follow what God has for your path. We are all loved, we are all called, and in to be a part of that, we all have a purpose for God's kingdom. And some of it might be small, some of it might be more radical and more um, out there, but each and every part that we have to pay, we can all be blessed in. And I just love Mary's response. So it's called Mary's Song from 46. It says, and Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in my God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. For now me and for all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. His name is holy. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. And he has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel remain remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three more months and then returned home. Now, when we read that, I was actually struck by it. There's nine different times in that Mary declares who God is. So her response in all of this from, I don't know, what your, you know, I don't know what your greeting is, I'm worried, what's this cost to me? To the impossible being made possible, why? Because God's word never fails. 
to being, Lord, let it be. And then her response is, is a reminder to us. So she's praising God about who, but it's a reminder to us. And I want to read this again over using what she's saying God is. And I just want you to listen to it about who she's saying God is. And it's, it's true what the Bible says. So the first one then is, for he is mindful of your humble state this morning. Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, he is mindful of that. He already knows it. He knows your heart better than you do. For the mighty one, he has done great things and he has done great things for you, but also he will do great things for you. That's his promise this morning. And his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. So his mercy will extend not only to you, but to your children's children. He has performed mighty deeds with his arms and he has scattered the pride in their innermost thoughts. And you know what? Sometimes that's us. Sometimes we are the ones who are proud on our innermost thoughts and that he puts us in a place where we then can be humbled, that we can overcome the proudness of where we think we can do this on our own because we can't. We need God to be able to do that. And this is just a reminder that he will be there. See, he can bring down rulers and from their thrones, but this is the bit. He, can, he has lifted the humble. So when we get rid of that proudness and we are humble, that's when he lifts us up. He has filled the hungry with good things. So if you are hungry this morning, if you are in need this morning, his word says, I will fill you with good things. And his, the whole way through the Bible is saying, you know, that promise over and over that there is nothing that we need that he will not give us. And it's just finishing off then is he has helped his servant Israel remember to be merciful. He has helped us and will help us to be merciful, not only to ourselves, but to those around us. And sometimes we need to start off in a place of being merciful to ourselves because we're the hardest critics on ourselves. Um, just the whole worship this morning actually was just perfect as we started singing off this morning on that song, he is, he is Faithful. That's exactly who God is. We were singing that he is a miracle worker, promise keeper. You know, it just set the tone of everything that God placed in my heart to say this morning, uh, just of a reminder. Um, so just as we br bring this to close, I'm gonna invite the, the worship team up and I just wanna pray for that this morning. I just want to pray that is there something in what I have said in the character of Mary that you can see in yourself? And there's so much still um, of Mary's journey throughout the nativity that we just don't have time this morning to cover. But I would encourage you to read on and to see what else you can learn about Mary, Mary's character throughout that. And then go and look at the other characters because there is so much that God has for us in that that we can learn, that we can grow on. So I just wanna, just wanna pray. Yeah, Heavenly Father, I just pray for all those that are here this morning. I pray for all those, uh, the circumstances that they're in. Lord, that they would hear your words, Lord, that they would have soft, open hearts and that they would accept when you say that they are loved, that they are favored, that they are the one that you left the 99 for, that you hold out your arms for them. Lord, no matter how ugly they see themselves, Lord, you see beauty. Lord, that once you love them bef before, that you love them now and that you will continue to love them. Lord, that you would break through into their circumstances. Lord, we pray for all those who feel like they're in a place of impossibility, the uncertainty, the uncomprehendable 
Lord, that they would know your truth this morning, that they would take hope in your word this morning because you have already overcome, you have already d done. There's no circumstances that we stand in this morning that you cannot overcome. And why? Because you say so, and your word does not fail, Lord. The Bible is so full of your truth. Lord, I just pray for all those that are in that situation that they would believe this this morning, that they would accept it, and their response, Lord, would be, let it be. No matter what it is, Lord, have your way. Do it your way, because your way is always best. Lord, I pray for comfort for all those this morning who need it. Lord, I pray for strength. Lord, and I pray hope into every circumstance. Lord, that you would just come and you would fill this place, that our heart's response to you would be to worship, to sing the truth of who you are, that you are the way maker, you are the promise keeper, that you are faithful, that what you say is yes and amen, that it is done, Lord. We just thank you for your love. Amen.